second field test of the Beta FPV 2004 3000 KV motor with a gem fan 5030 two blade T mount prop in the Ishin Micro Sky Hunter. After flying it, um, doing the uh, initial flight with it, testing out this power system, it turned out that it was quite a bit more efficient in the air than I thought it was going to be looking at the amp numbers on the bench test. And so I flew it for a little over more, four minutes with mixed mode flying, hard in the throttle, cruising part of the time. And um, I still had over 3.9 volts per cell when I landed. I'm flying it with a 3S, 1300 milliamp hour, 30C LiPo. It has tons of power now. Uh, this motor was provided to Ground Control RC by Beta FPV. I want to thank them again for sending this for review. So... I've always loved this Micro Sky Hunter, even with the stock power system, but now I am loving it even more that it has so much more power with this Beta FPV motor. So let's see if we can get it in the air. With the weight of this Ishin Micro Sky Hunter, Looking at the thrust number on the bench, it should give me a 1.84 to 1 thrust to weight ratio. That's pretty awesome. Unlimited vertical, guys. Did you see that? That is outstanding. <laughs> And I did not get a run at it. I went vertical from cruising speed. And it just kept going vertical. Just kept going. That is awesome. Yeah, I'm loving this plane even more. With this uh, Beta FPV motor in it. That is awesome. This is one of those planes that just flies great right out of the box. I haven't had to make any modifications to it at all. Absolutely, absolutely outstanding plane. And I am loving this power system. And the stock power system was spinning a 6x3 prop. And I just have a 50-30 two blade prop on it now. So with a smaller diameter prop, you also get much less torque roll. So that's another added benefit with this power system, this motor and prop, compared to the stock motor and prop. So not only do you get more... Look at that awesome. Not only do you get a ton more power from it, but you get less torque roll. And it also seems to be pretty darn efficient, which really surprised me. You just never know. You know, looking at the amp draw in a static position where the motor is really being worked hard because it can't unload. And then seeing how efficient it is in the air compared to on the bench. So after this flight, I'll meet you back at the hangar and we'll discuss this power system a little bit more. I'll, I'll tell you all the components that I have in it. But it's, uh, it's outstanding. That, it does those big wide loops like that effortlessly now. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. Just absolutely awesome. I'm loving this motor. Watch the truck. I never would have considered a motor this size. 
you know, until I had an opportunity to test one of them. But it is. These brushless motors, I mean, they have improved so much over the past few years. It is amazing how small, how light, and how much thrust they produce. I mean, this is a 16.2 gram, or 16.8 gram motor, I think is what it is. 16.8 gram motor that produces that kind of power. I mean, that is, I don't know about you guys, I think that is absolutely amazing. Look at that. <laughs> Effortless. <laughs> Vertical climb, unlimited vertical climb. That is, that is just absolutely outstanding. So the first time I had it out, I set my timer for four minutes because I wasn't sure how efficient it was going to be in the air. And uh, so now I've got my timer set for five minutes. I'm starting to get my haptic now. Mixed mode flying, cruising around part of the time, hard, hard in the throttle part of the time. So when we land over here, let's make our um, circuits. Check our traffic. We look good that way. See if we can stay below the sun here. It looks like we're good that way. All right, so let's see if we can bring it in for a landing on the main road. I had to land it out here on this little dirt lane last time. That is, that is even rougher than this main lane out here. Sweet. Yeah, so let's bring it up here and check the voltage on it now that I've done a full five minute flight on it with the same LiPo, uh, 3S, 1300 milliamp hour, 30C LiPo, and pretty hard in the throttle a lot of the time, you know, mi mixed, uh, mixed mode flying, cruising around part of the time, really hard in the throttle part of the time. I did a lot of full throttle vertical climbs, loops, split S maneuvers. So let's see exactly what we have as, as far as power left in this battery, voltage left in this battery. Okay, I'll try to hold this battery meter up here where you guys can see it. Try to angle it away from the sun. 11.75 in the pack. 3.9, 3.9, and 3.9, and I had it in the air for over five minutes. I can't believe that. I, I did not think, I really did not think that this power system was going to be as efficient as it is. All right, so I will see you back at the hangar, and I'll go over all the components that I have in this plane, because as you can see, this power system is pretty awesome for this size and this weight plane so you may want to use the same power system and something else that's about the same size and about the same weight even if it's not the micro sky hunter this power system pushes it extremely well unlimited vertical and it's pretty darn efficient 3.3.9 .3 volts i can't believe it i can't believe it has 3.9 volts left in that cell all right i'll see you back at the hangar so, what do you think of that little motor? What do you think of the unlimited vertical climb on this plane now? That is awesome. I'll tell you what, I think that the, I said it in the last video, and, and I'll say it again, this Beta FPV motor and this proper stain on this plane, it's not going anywhere. I'm leaving it in there. I also say in the last video, I've got another one of those written, there's their motors ready to go in an aircraft. I have not made up my mind yet what aircraft it's going to be yet, but it's going to be tested on 4S. Maybe 3S and 4S, but definitely 4S. But um, I would say that these are premium motors, but you don't have to pay a premium price for them. I am so impressed with a 16.6 gram motor producing that amount of thrust and being that efficient. That was the thing that was a real head scratcher. When I got out there, and you guys saw my flight, okay, I was in the throttle quite a bit, you know, mixed mode flying, really hard in the throttle. There were a lot of times I was full throttle. Hard in the throttle, 
part of the time and cruising part of the time. And I could not, I could not believe that after I had it in the air for five minutes and I landed on an old 3S 1300 milliamp hour 30C lipo, I still had, oh, and you saw it on the meter, over 3.9 volts per cell. I thought that I was going to get much shorter flight times with this power system than what I got on the stock. Now, on the stock, I was using a 1000 milliamp hour lipo that weighed right at 99.5 grams. It was a higher C, it was a 70 C. This one is a 1300 milliamp hour 30 C, 3S lipo, that weighs 106 grams, so it's additional 6.5 grams of weight. But it looks to me like even with the 1000 milliamp hour 70 C lipos that I normally fly with, I would be getting 5 to 6 minutes of flight time, I think. And with the 1300, and those are newer lipos than these 1300s. With these 1300s, it looks like I'm going to get somewhere between seven and a half to eight hundred, seven and a half to eight and a half minutes of flight time the way I fly, leaving about 3.6 volts per cell. Um, I, with that amount of power, I think that's outstanding because I'm using it now. I do see the amount of power in flight that I saw on the bench. This definitely has a 1.84 to 1 thrust to weight ratio because I had it pointed vertical and had it at full throttle and it just kept going and kept going and kept going until I backed off the throttle, rolled it over, pulled it through. And you saw the speed run. This motor pushes this plane exceptionally well. Um, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with it. I'm happy with the power. I'm happy with the flight time. That's what I always try to do. Is I try to get a balance of power and flight time. Now, if you can get a power system on a plane like this that has unlimited vertical, and you're still going to get seven and a half, somewhere between seven and a half to eight and a half minutes of flight time with that kind of power, I think that is awesome. So I can't wait to put the other. One of these other motors, another one of these beta FPV motors, and another plane on the 4S just to see. It's going to be a screamer. It is, it's absolutely going to be a screamer. So I started thinking about why, why am I seeing so much more efficiency in fly than what I was seeing on the bench. And I've done a lot of prop and motor testing over the years. And what I can tell you and I've used a lot of different speed controllers. What I can tell you is that if you can find a good match, there are just some motors and some ESC combinations that work much better together than other combinations. So if you can find an ESC that drives that motor exceptionally well and times with it exceptionally well, not only will you see better efficiency, but you'll see better thrust. As a primary example, my King Kong Tiny Wing 450 had a, I think it was an 1105, 5000 kV motor in it. And it was just, it was just kind of doggy, you know, it just didn't seem like it had the power that it needed. And I was contemplating removing the motor and installing a different motor in it. Well, I didn't do that. Instead of doing that, I replaced the stock board with a, a separate receiver and a separate speed controller. Same motor, same LiPo, and yet that plane felt like it had about 25% more power than it had with the stock ESC. So it makes a huge difference. Now the, the ESC that I tested this motor with has worked exceptionally well with every motor I've hooked up to it. And that was the Favorite Sky One, and I think that was a 60 amp. ESC that I was did the bench testing with. What I have in this plane is a Racer Star 30 amp Opto ESC that I attached a 5 volt switching regulator to to convert it so that I could use it in the plane. And yeah, I'm almost guessing that the difference between the amount of um, efficiency that I saw on the bench and the amount of efficiency that I'm seeing in the air with this plane is due to the fact that that Racer Star Opto ESC is timing much better with this motor 
than the favorite Sky One ESC was. Because, you know, the smoother, the, be the better the timing, the smoother the motor is going to operate, the more torque it's going to have. The more torque that it has, the fewer amps it has to use to spin that prop. That's the only explanation I have for it. Because the, the efficiency that I'm seeing in the air is quite a bit different than the efficiency that I was seeing on the, on the bench numbers. So I'm almost guessing that if I had used this ESC on the bench testing with this motor, I would have seen higher thrust numbers as well. Because uh, it sure looks like it's got higher than a 1.84 to 1 thrust to weight ratio when I'm going vertical with it. But just, just absolutely awesome. Um, I, I think whatever plane I put it in, I think I might use another one of those ESCs. I've got more than one of those ESCs. So anyway, um, this is a, the, the performance on this motor is what you would get from a premium motor, but it's not priced like a premium motor. So if you guys are interested in this motor, I've got links to it in the show notes, okay? But I'm, I'm exceptionally happy with it. And uh, this plane, you know, it doesn't have to be this plane. If you've got a plane that's a similar size and a similar weight, I think that my, if I remember right, my up, all up weight on it was somewhere around three, 390 grams, somewhere between 375 and 390 grams. This was, put, this was putting out on the bench, it was putting out 624 grams of thrust. So, if you have a similar size plane, that motor and that HQ 5x3T mount prop are an awesome combination on a 3S LiPo. So, yeah, if you have a, if you have a similar, similar size and weight aircraft, you won't go wrong with that power system. Okay, so, anyway, stay tuned. I'm going to take it out and test it in another aircraft on 4S. I'm not sure which aircraft that's going to be yet. But I'll try to get that done as soon as possible and get it back in the air. So, And then that will be the, uh, that'll complete the review of this motor when I'm out there testing it on 4S. So, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.